All right, here I am. Here's this little candlestick again all by itself. And look, right next to it is a piece of carnival glass for $6 that's going in the cart. Look at this beautiful, there's only one, but I'm buying it. I normally don't buy just one candlestick, but that's a beautiful color and it's got to be from the Depression era. I think that's a good one. So that's gonna go in the cart. <laughs> the carnival glass is gonna go in the cart. <clears throat> And then somebody took a hawking sandwich in uh, Ruby in uh, Forest Green and they made a candle out of it. Uh, should I buy that for $2 and get the wax out of there? Uh, possibly, but nobody's gonna mess with that while I'm in the store, so <clears throat> I'll leave that for a moment and I'll keep shopping. These are old, but I'm not over the moon about those, so we'll leave them there. Uh, gee, it would be nice if I could find the mate to that one. What is this thing? Five forty-nine. I'm not sure what that is. It might not be anything. Uh, good glory be. So anyway, here I am. Here I am. Here I'm is. Uh, what are these? Is that mid? Those are candle holders four dollars each and there's three of them that's not from the era that i like to buy and sell so i think i'll leave it there i don't know what it was and now we're just getting into wax candles hmm. all right let me turn around all right i'm seeing a lot of anchor hawkins royal ruby red this is their typical little vases here uh i don't know what the color is today but two dollars and fifty cents is more than I would want to pay for any of these. It's a nice little collection of them. But as I've said, I find these a lot in my area and I can do a little bit better than that. There's the green one back there. Is that little Fenton piece hiding back there or Pilgrim? Come out of here, you little cranberry thing, you. Let's see what you are. No, you're Amethyst and you have I'm not sure what you are. You're 350, that ain't bad. Okay, let's, I don't know, maybe, maybe not. Put that back in there, but there's a lot of these. And here's more. With the, that's got an enamel decoration on it. Here's even more, boy, somebody was really collecting their, oops, I'm in the way. <laughs> I'm in the way. Does that look like antique Majolica? Guess what? It's not. <laughs> no, you can just tell the quality isn't there. And that's a strange looking form. And it's made in China. We'll put that back. What is this? Oh, for Pete's sake. Oh, I just picked that up. It's plastic. I've already looked at that. That's not old. Uh, ooh, ooh. Banging stuff in here today. All right, backing up. This, I'm certain, isn't anything. Nope, we don't even have to look at the bottom of it, but we will, just in case anybody wants to know. Nothing. Put that back down. I don't mean nothing. <clears throat> you know what I mean. It's, I, I like the 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. And that's pretty much most of the time where I stay. Okay, let me just put my hands on this quickly before anybody else gets here and let me stick it in my cart. That is an old pink depression glass pitcher. I will look closely at it in a minute. But it's, the folks are starting to gather here and I need to move. <laughs> I need to move quickly. I think, I think, I think, oh yes. Well, now let's make sure and I know where they mark these and they usually mark it on the center. Let me see if I can get it open with one hand. Yep, it's machined and it's usually marked back here. And this one is, is this a Kensington? Yep. Okay, I didn't even look at the price, <laughs> uh, $7. We'll have that, let's put that in the cart. And I'll look at that again in a minute. Uh, I don't 
don't need any more. I'm out of focus. I don't need any more of that. And let's see. This is the way it is, folks. When they open the doors, you know the people run in here. And boy, you've got to be Scotty on the spot. And I do that a lot. I'll throw it in the cart and then go off to the side. I don't stand in the middle of the aisle and get on my computer. Well, people do that. No, I, I move over to the side so I'm not in anybody's way. That's an old one. Mm-hmm. I'm only picking that up because I'm not going to buy it. But you might want to see it. Look at all of these. I, there's several of the Franciscan. I don't collect it, but you know, I collect cups and saucers, mostly in glass, but I've started getting into a little more pottery as well. You gotta have one in your collection if you're gonna have a collection of American dinnerware. And I chose this because it's got, and the rubber bands are in the way, but there's that old made in California stamp on the back. That's right, so this is the early stuff. And if I'm gonna get one, I want one of the old California made pieces. So <clears throat> that's that. I'll put that back in there. I still need to take a closer look at the picture and the silver tidbit by Kensington, but I think it's in good condition. We're gonna just not even look at you for a minute. Let's go up here. Oh, look, <laughs> speaking of flora gold, there's more of it. Uh, no, I'm just playing. We love our iris and herring bone. Hello. Uh, here's pattern. This pattern glass. That's an old one. That's an old one. Two ninety nine. That is really nifty. Here's a made in Japan. That's a, probably a nineteen thirties piece. Dollar ninety nine. That's cute. That's a that's a little one. There's a leaf that says 17. Oh, it was made in 1730. Ooh. No, it was not made in 1730. Here's some little berry bowls that have gilding on them. I'm sorry, I keep going in and out of focus. I don't know why that's happening at the moment. <clears throat> More pressed glass over here. Let's just look at a couple of these and see if the, they all have the old stamp from California. It didn't have anything on it. Yeah, there's the old California stamp. And there's another one of the old ones. Then I think the mid-century stamp looks like a television set and then it's made in England. $65 on this beautiful mahogany empire table with a generous, generous po a pillar <clears throat> with wonderful scroll feet and original casters. And look, uh, yeah, we need to do some work on the top, but you can barely see it here. But look at this beautiful flame mahogany. And that's what you get here when it's cut a certain way. And we can see here that the wood, wood uh, that the craftsman has put, built this table so that we see the beautiful flame right where you want it in the sweet spot in the center. That is a nice table. And that top could be restored. And what a beautiful thing it would be. It's a steel at $65. And it's forced to sit there next to this lovely piece of, well, <clears throat> I'll just clear my throat. That's not quite my taste. Uh, let's keep going and see what we can see. Here's a nice piece, serpentine front. That's going to date to about 1915. Uh, that's mahogany as well. 1910, 1915, somewhere in there. And then over here is another piece that's that's uh, Second Empire, but this is the Second Empire that's popular in the 20s. This dresser right here with the scroll front, and this is oak veneer, and that's in rough shape, but it could be refinished. That's only $25. And again, this type of furniture, uh, this, this Second Empire became popular again in the early 20s. 
And that's when that would have been made. And then, of course, a nice Art Deco Schiffer robe over here or wardrobe, depending. Uh, we'd have to open it up to see if it has drawers in it or not with um, the veneers. And then another dresser here from the mid-1920s and a drum table over there. I'm telling you, brown furniture, we love you. We love you. Well, I do. And most of you do, too, I think. <gasps> Look at that 1920s. Oh, ooh, 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 ooh. Look how cute the little table, the little child's table, probably from the 1940s with painted details on the legs and a little decal of a puppy here in the center. Little child's table for the kitchen. That's really cute. And look at that. You know what that is, don't you? Of course, that's a chair that would have gone with a telephone table and that's a sewing machine. So these two don't go together. From the 1920s, those little tiny chairs went with tables that held the telephone. And let's see if the table is around here somewhere. It might've gotten separated. Who knows? We'll see if we can find it. A lot of times they do get separated. Mm, and I'm not seeing it, but we're gonna work our way over to the lamps, the lamp department. And of course, as usual, we got a lot of noise going on and a lot of music playing. Boy, this console bowl is huge. And I've been waiting for it to go on sale and it hasn't yet. Look at the size of that. Great big rolled edge. Now I know some of the gold has come off of it. Um, what is the price of it? It's $15. That's okay. I mean, really, if I was gonna keep it. But I don't need another big amber. It's filthy, isn't it? I personally don't need another big amber console bowl from the depression. I don't really want to pay $15 for it, but it's been here and no one has bought it at 15. So there's a good chance that will, uh, that'll go on sale. This I think is New Martinsville. I can never, is that called Radiance? I don't know the etch. Let's see. Well, that's $15 as well. Sometimes I, I well, as you know, I get my patterns mixed up. It's very easy to confuse them, you know, forget. There's another nice one. Oh, that's heavy. I wonder if that's marked. No, I don't see anything. It's a nice crystal console bowl. That one's only $10. And some lead crystal here. Boy, you can just see it. There's the sandwich pattern. Let's move that out of the way. Oh, this is probably new, relatively new, but boy, it's heavy crystal, $14. It's nice. Okay, so I'm at the Goodwill store and I'm looking for, uh, looking for some stuff. I found a kitty cat right down there. We'll look at her probably out in the car. Uh, a Siamese cat. The shelves are pretty bare today. I don't know why. Ooh, now look at that. That's old. No, it's not. I bet that's, no. 
that's trying to fool me. That has chips on it. What's that say? I can't read it. Oh, but it's all chipped up. And I won't buy this, but let's take a look and see it's, if it's something probably made in Japan. It's five bucks, and it's uh, Norataki, Norataki, China. Okay. What else have we got here? Well, someone donated their collection of old aluminum. You know, this is something I've never really tried to sell before, but I might take a chance. I might just buy a few pieces. Believe it or not, some of this really does go back to the 1930s and 40s. Uh, mm, there's so much of it here. Uh, made by various companies. I'm familiar with uh, Kensington and let's see if we can find my goodness this is quite a collection I just don't know how well it would do um, I suppose just like anything else there's collectors for everything now that's six dollars and it's got roses on it let's see if we can find a maker on this one most of the time these pieces are marked now of course I don't see anything on the back of this one sometimes it's down in the handle all right I didn't see a mark on that let's go to this little one over here which is priced at four dollars and are they going to be difficult for me today and i'm not going to find makers marks after i just got done saying i find that a lot of these are marked okay we're going to keep looking until we find one that is marked uh look at that one are they tulips on that one? Let me see here. Okay, my word. And I keep talking because the radio is playing over top of me. Okay, this is very frustrating. That I can't seem to find one of these that has a, a maker's mark on it. They're not always marked on the bottom. Okay, this is baffling. I haven't given up yet. I know my camera is pretty quickly. How about that. Aha, finally. Oh my goodness, there's one that's marked. See how difficult it is to see? It says Farber. This one says Farber and Shell Shellwin Shewin Incorporated. Hand wrought. I don't think. Well there, I'll let you see that. See? Big old bread basket. That's six dollars. Okay. That's a color combination I haven't seen before, and I love it very nice art deco now sadly that's it there's no creamer and there are no plates or cups or saucers it's just one portal sugar bowl and it's four dollars anyway made in japan 1930s see it's the kind of thing is to where if i just start collecting if I just buy all this orphan stuff then you just wind up with eight thousand orphaned pieces and I have to force myself not to do that. Uh, Cause I, I just, I know, you know, you say, well, buy it and then you'll find the rest of the pieces to it. I just don't have the time to be able, you know, to do that most of the time. So I'm leaving it. I know you can craft with it and you can do other things with it. And a lot of folks will say, yeah, but you can do this and you can do that. And that's true. That's very true. All kinds of things you can do with individual little pieces. However, not for me. I just have, you know, so much, so much inventory that I'll, I'll just choose to leave that. Now, watch me go to the next thrift store and uh, the creamer will be there. The whole set will be there. And then I'll come back here and the sugar bowl will be gone. That'll fix me. All right. 
Any old waffle irons? Any old coffee pots? Any, 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 any? Nope, 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 nope. Okay, let's split. All right, well, here I am, and I am in another location. And uh, this time, well, let me show you. I'm going to pick up another jewelry box from the 30s. And this one is missing quite a bit of its decal. Too bad. That was a cute little English cottage, but still great look. And I think someone is still going to cherish that. I love these, especially from the 1930s. I have two Goofus glass plates in here, which I'm paying way too much money for because they ain't worth it. $7, but I don't know. I just can't help poor old Goofus glass. Can't say no to it. So, uh, and then a candy jar. Nice big one, etched. Circa 1930. And I might take that lid off. I see some breakage on the lid under there, but it's on the under rim, which is not a big deal. I don't like it, but again, you don't see it when the lid is on typically. Okay, I'm really losing focus. I might have to redo that whole clip. Boy, this was a beauty in its day. This is just sort of classic 1940s. That is the Home Entertainment Center circa 1947. It's all artificially, well, what you see on the front is artificially grained veneer. And uh, let's take a look and see, see what's left of it. So on this, here we've got the, and it's a zenith. Look at that. Oh my gosh. WCAU, WKY, WFIL. These are Philly stations. Treble volume, alto bass, loud bass, normal. There's probably even some short wave on here. Standard broadcast, yeah, short wave. Oh my gosh. And then on this side is your record player. Let's pull that out. Oh man. These always need so much repair and there's not much value to them. But some of the guys like to get these and bring them back to life. But it's a lot of work. Speaker over here, storage for records under here. Very expensive when it was new.